Here's a new universe puzzle to solve, and this one is on space. Because understanding the universe is like solving a puzzle. Over the past centuries, theories and experiments led to clues about how the universe works. Pieces of the puzzle, more clues, each year, each century, until the early 1900s. Then it started to get more complex, pieces not fitting together. So let's clear our minds, let's look at new clues, and revisit old ones, and let's see if there's a simpler model for the universe. Space. What is the universe made of? And I'd love to get your thoughts at the end, but let's run through some clues first. And let's begin in the late 1600, when Huygens proposed his theory on light and light traveling as waves. Now imagine light traveling from the sun to the earth, that's through empty space, and traveling as waves. Now, Huygens also came up with the Huygens principle, which is that wavelets, smaller little waves, combine to form larger ones, producing a wave front. Clue number two, shortly after, Isaac Newton and his theory on light, not as waves, but as particles traveling through the luminiferous ether. Now, Newton's theory and Huygens' theory are not necessarily incompatible because, as we know now, waves are actually vibrations of particles, more atoms or molecules. And good examples of waves in other mediums, and waves require a medium of everything else that we know, our examples could be like a water wave, which is a vibration of water molecules, or sound waves, you know, the vibration of air molecules. Okay. Clue number three, we'll fast forward another century and a half to Maxwell's work on electromagnetic waves, Maxwell's equations, where he incorporated light, but also other types of EM, electromagnetic waves. Radio waves, for example, X-rays, gamma rays, and light, all being different frequencies wavelengths, different wavelengths, of an EM wave. And that's an oscillating electric field and magnetic field. But the other thing that Maxwell did in 1865 is he measured the speed of light. So a limit to how fast light can travel in empty space. Now it's worth noting that other types of waves, same ones that we were just mentioning, also have speed limits. Right. Sound, for example, travels at a speed limit in air, but it also has a different speed limit in something like metal, where it's much more dense and atoms are, are more compact. It travels faster. So waves in mediums have a speed limit. Next, clue number four. Right around the end of the 18th century, Max Planck introduced the Planck units and an incredibly small Planck length. Now, what are the Planck units? Some suggest that it might have be a limit to range of a physical quantity. So Planck length, for example, might be the smallest possible length of the universe. Don't know. But these equations, or the length, I should say, were born out of equations, right? So that Planck, uh, Planck length, is a Planck constant, uh, the gravitational constant, uh, the speed limit C that we were just referring to on the previous page, and it yields an incredibly small value, 10 to the minus 35 meters. How small is that? You know, roughly about maybe 20 orders magnitude than the electron. All right, well, how much is 20 orders of magnitude? To give you an idea how, how small it is, Imagine the electron were the size of our Milky Way galaxy. If so, then the particle, a particle the size of Planck length, would be a grain of sand. You would need a lot of them just to be able to fill up an electron, just like you would need many grains of sand to fill up the Milky Way. That's how small it is. But what does it mean? What is that? Again, it's born out of equations, but it might be the smallest physical quantity in the universe. Now, right around the end of the 18th 
century, there was an experiment that concluded, well, there probably is not an ether. Maybe, maybe not. So 1900s till now, uh, instead of calling it the ether, there's other names for it instead. Turn of the century in the 19th century, Einstein's work on gravity. He called it space-time and the warping of space-time to be able to uh, account for gravity. Or the electric field, for the uh, electric force between two particles. How do they interact and communicate uh, with each other throughout empty space? Well, there's a field, an electric field. Or for magnetism, a magnetic field. Or for mass, a Higgs field. Um, or to explain some quantum things, uh, the quantum foam. Uh, and so, you know, fields and foam and, and different names for space to be able to account for how particles might interact with each other over short and long distances. And so with these five clues, I'm very curious to get your thoughts and you can leave comments if you wish. What do you think space is made of?